अधर्म अभिभवात् कृष्ण प्रदूष्यन्ती कुलस्त्रिय स्त्रीषु दुष्टाशु वाष्णैर्य जायते वर्णशंकर हेलो फ्रेंड्स फ्रेंड्स दिस इज द फोर्टी फर्स्ट श्लोक ऑफ द फर्स्ट चैप्टर ऑफ भगवद्गीता एंड इन टूडेज वीडियो वी विल अंडरस्टैंड दिस श्लोक इन डिटेल सो लेट्स गो ओवर इट्स मीनिंग फर्स्ट सो द श्लोक सेज अधर्म अभिभवात् कृष्ण विच मीन्स वेन अधर्म हैपन्स ओ कृष्ण Pradushyanti Kulastriya, which means the women of the family are then polluted. Strisu Dushtashu Vashnerya, which means with the evil entering the women, O descendant of Vrishni, which is again Shri Krishna. Jayate Varna Sankara, which means the Varnas or the qualities of the next generation. Uh, gets mixed so over here arjun is telling shri krishna that uh, when adharm happens then the uh, women of the family get polluted and uh, uh, with the evil entering into the women the uh, varn get mixed up so the statement of arjun over here is actually directly coming from the teachings of manu smriti in manu smriti uh, the the laws have been presented in a way where uh, mixing of the varnas are prohibited they are not actually prohibited but they are discouraged basically so arjun is saying the same thing over here that uh, when adharm happens then the women get polluted and uh, with evil entering them the varnas get mixed so the uh, the idea of the varna actually is a very controversial one and a lot of people say that this is something which has led to the uh, establishment of the caste system in india and to a certain extent they are right uh, it indeed did had uh, have a contribution towards the establishment of uh, the caste system but there is there is a reasoning behind it there is a thinking behind it which we i think have forgotten as a hindu society and that's why we get confused the varn as such is not uh, the same thing as jati although we did confuse the two of them later on but they are not the same thing varn actually is based on quality and i think at the time of arjun uh, we used to think of varn in that sense that you know um, people have different qualities and so their dharm according to their quality should be different that's why all the instructions that have been given in manusmriti are based on your varn and uh, you are uh, told to behave in a certain way according to your varn itself um you can think of it in a in a way that you know if uh, you are a person who who are a businessman then you have to behave a certain way if you are a intellectual then you have to behave a certain way and uh, mixing them up will basically uh, cause confusion now you can understand it pretty easily you know if you were to say marry a boy who comes from a family which is of the intellectuals and um, you were to marry that to a girl who comes from the family of the warriors then the the progeny of the two will be confused i mean they will not know if uh, the progeny has more inclination towards fighting or it has more inclination towards uh towards being uh, more intellectual or and somebody can have both of them the others can have uh, none of them but there'll be a bit of confusion over there and so if we have to give them instructions in terms of how to behave it will create confusion and uh, when we cannot give right instructions to the next generation in terms of how to behave it will lead to the fall of the society so that was the main idea behind not mixing the varn so um this is what arjun is pointing on over here and of course the statement that he is making is a pretty it's pretty convincing one actually uh, but as we will see arjun uh, shri krishna is actually going to teach him against this thing so uh, this really shows you know how um, the teachings of manu smriti do not stand up as absolute teachings like we see in uh, other religions for example where their teachings are like uh things written in stone those teachings are not so rigid in in the hindu society and we can see that over here from this example in geeta itself where uh, shri krishna is now going to teach against this instruction that has been given in manusmriti um 
the idea as such of people marrying outside their community is not something which has completely been gone out of society now also even now you will see that um, marrying outside communities is a taboo i mean the inter religious marriages is still a taboo in in india and there is a lot of discussion even now going on in terms of the idea of love jihad and things like that where hindus don't want their women to get married into the in, into into the muslims and the same thing is true for the muslims also they don't want to get their women married into the hindu society also so this uh, situation of uh, uh, women getting married outside the community is still a problem and i think uh, when arjun is making his statement over here he is actually making that statement with this thing in mind not really the manusmriti teaching as such um, he is saying that you know if i kill my own family members then of course the uh, men of uh, my family will die and so when that will happen then uh, women will have no option but to go outside the family and uh, create offsprings outside the family and that's why the word that he's using is pradushyanti kulastriya which means the women will get polluted because then they'll have to go outside the kul or outside the whole uh, society uh, similarly when he is saying when dushtashu uh, strisu dushtashu which means when evil enters women basically what he is uh, again saying is that uh, the women will have to go outside and so uh, from the, you cannot really you do not really know outside the community if the people are really are or not are they ideal people or not you don't really know that and so that's why he is saying the dushtashu basically the evil entering them over here so this kind of an idea is present in all societies if you look at uh, muslims for example in the muslims they make sure that when uh, they are marrying even the women if they are marrying they want to convert her to to islam basically so they don't want their society to get mixed up with the ideas from the outside because if you have muslim ideas and a hindu girl comes into your family then she is going to bring hindu ideas into the muslim family this is going to create confusion in the family itself and that's why they say that uh you should just convert the women to islam so that uh, the uh, teachings of islam do not get polluted or the family values which are islamic in a society do not get polluted same thing is true for hindus also where hindus uh, don't want their girls to get married into the muslim society because in that situation then um they lose one woman who has now gone uh, and uh, taken up the values of the other society so she has in a certain extent in 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 the hindu tradition we say that she has been polluted we don't want her to uh, basically now create an of so the offsprings that are now going to come out of her will have islamic values and not hindu values basically so uh, those kind of concerns have been raised over here uh, by arjun so these concerns definitely are very convincing they are very um, important and even now in today's society also we are debating over these kind of concerns so i hope i have explained this shlok uh, well to you with this i'll close this video i'll see you all in the next video take care